And like I was saying, like so if you start with an atom, all right, you get to the point where it gets the so big to the macrocosm where we only see filaments. Now this, it, I'm not done. This is just lightly done, you know. But it's filaments, all right. That's what the universe is. It's reverted to plasma. Now there is a reversion of the universe. It's not entropy. It's a reversion. And there's also reverse relativity, all right. Now, I'm not going to explain those either until people actually show some kind of interest, all right. Now, I know I know what I'm talking about because I've verified every bit of it with all of our real science, all right? So I'm not just a lunatic, all right? So now, once you've zoomed out so far onto the macrocosm, say this is our universe, okay? Everything outside of that that we cannot see that goes on for infinitely, I mean, just so infinite is God. It's inconceivable. It's fathomless. We cannot even begin to understand that kind of fathomless nature, okay? We can understand its nature, but we can't understand what it is. I mean, or, or we can say we know what it is, but we don't know what it actually is. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we can understand the energy and how it works, but we can't understand what all of that is. We, we just can't see that far, you know? But I'll tell you this, all right? If you can conceive something, it can exist, all right? Notice how many movies and ideas end up coming true, all right? If you can conceive it, it can exist. If you cannot conceive it, it cannot exist, all right? Perception. People are like, oh, perceive it. It's not real, you know, if, if you can't perceive it. No, that means you aren't real. You aren't alive to be able to perceive it. Just because you can't perceive it doesn't mean it's not there, okay? It means you aren't there to perceive it. See what I mean? It's not perception is everything technically. It's conception is everything. All right. So if it exists, then it was it has to be conceived. We exist, therefore we were conceived. The universe literally conceived us and our existence. Okay. Space itself is static. Okay. Space itself is static and unchanging and infinite, all right? It doesn't change. It remains static, okay? That's where leptons, that's where, that's where, that's the nature of our leptons, the static, okay? The static fabric of space, okay? It's infinite. People are like, oh, space changes all the time. No, the universe changes all the time. Space itself, like I said, itself stays the same. Okay, I, I try to. I, I hate to have to repeat myself several times or break something down into simplicity, like, like, and, and be like a smart ass. But people say some of the dumbest shit, you know, and then like, oh, you know, and then you try to explain it to them, and then they bail out of the conversation or they'll delete everything, you know, because oh shit, that, it just made me look stupid. Why? Because you kept trying to make me look stupid when you didn't know what I knew, and all I was trying to do was convey this information. See what I'm saying? I mean, people do that shit all the time. I get, in, I get, I mean, all I try to do is get on these groups and try to pe help people understand, okay, that the Big Bang Theory and Cosmic Plasma Theory, Plasma Cosmology, combined are the truth. Both of them combined are the truth, okay? Like I said, anything that's plasma is living. The universe is composed of plasma, okay? Space, Alpha and Omega, all of that, it's plasma. It's living energy. That's God, okay? That's why... The universe mirrors our mind, okay? You have synapse firing all the time. We look up in the air, in, in the space, or the universe, and we see supernova all the time flashing. That's like synapse, okay, on a macro grand scale, okay? See what I'm saying? It, just because it's pseudoscience, they only, you know what? People say pseudoscience, but they don't even remember or even put any kind of focus toward the word science in that word. They say, oh, it's pseudoscience. Okay, so you added science in there. Does that mean it has some truth? Well, yeah, it's actually very true. Our physics and everything we know actually proves it. But people have this problem with understanding what God might be, you know? I mean, they think it's some floating man or something. I mean, geez, man, come on, people. Come on, you know? If everything exists and God is the creator and there's only one, then that has to be the universe, the space and if it's alpha and omega, that's quarks and leptons. That's nuclear energy and electric energy. That's the, that's the energy of the universe that is literally eternal. See what I'm saying? So that is God. That exists in every atom, in everything that is alive. 
Even planets and stars, okay? They have their covalent bonds of atoms and everything, electrons, okay? They even have cores. I figured this, too. If anything, if any planet has a molten core, I mean, obviously, this is even common sense, it's going to have life on it, no matter what. Just because we can't see it, like Enceladus. Enceladus, uh, it's spewing out all this. Guarantee there's organic compounds. Guarantee there's actually organic life. Guarantee there are microbes, and there might even be something bigger than that. But it's got the inner heating. It's got all of the, necess all of the necessities, everything necessary for life. Okay, any planet or moon or anything that has the alpha and omega is going to have life. It's a blessed planet. That's what a bless. That's what blessings. That's what a blessing is. Excuse me. Okay, our planet is a blessed planet. All right. Now, people. All, when I talk all this stuff to people, all they hear. Okay, like say atheists or something. All they hear is bless and God. Okay, they don't hear any of the science. All they hear is that. And then they're like, that's stupid. That's retarded. What an idiot. You know? Uh, did you not hear anything else that made perfect sense? Or did you just hear what you wanted to hear? Okay? People want to fight. People are miserable these days. That's all they want to do is fight and have drama. They don't want to actually solve something. If, if science came out and said, look, there is a God. We've known about this infinite God for 90 years now, okay? We've known literally for about 90 years. But if we told everybody, that will, you know, that means that uh, we were wrong in thinking there was no God. Or it would say, well, now that everybody's on the same page, there's not as much crime and chaos and fighting and drama. That's why they hide the fact. That's why they keep suppressing all this information. That's why they hide all this information. Because they want drama. Okay? Look, I'm telling you, this is the truth. This is the truth. Okay? This is the unveiling. All right? This is real. Alpha and Omega, God, space, all that. It's real. Okay? And it's creation and it exists in everything. And it can all literally be proven and put together in and during our quantum, or through our quantum physics. Okay? Even the Higgs field. Look, the Higgs field is basically the area of the God particle, okay, or the Big Bang or whatever, the singularity, the quantum evolved star. I call it a God molecule technically because it's many particles, okay? An atom is only one atom, okay? A molecule is two or more atoms, okay? This is many particles and many atoms, okay? So I technically, the technical term for it would be a molecule. All right, now, the singularity. Oh, it's just a dot, okay? Obviously, it's just a dot, Compared to infinite space. You know what I'm saying? If you have infinite space, of course it's going to be a dot. But when you zoom way in on it, it's going to be huge. It's going to be larger than our local group. Literally. See what I'm saying? So they contradict themselves just by saying that it's tiny. By saying it's tiny, they're telling you that space already existed. Okay? First of all, if space, obviously here, if space didn't exist yet, how the hell did the singularity exist? It didn't have any area to exist in. That contradicts it, okay? Dude, you cannot make infinite empty space. You just can't do it. It's impossible. That is where everything reduces to. That's the bottom line. That's as close to the truth as we can get. Space, bam, that's it, man. We can't understand any further than that. That's as close to understanding the nature of the universe we're going to get, is knowing that space cannot be created and these two energies, or mainly space and alpha, Okay, but alpha by itself cannot really live. It can't do what it needs to do. So it has to emit beta or omega to be able to do this. It needs that mother force. Okay, gravity and electromagnetism are byproduct forces. Okay, it starts with the strong force. The strong force literally makes a byproduct force, which is the weak force. These two forces together create two other byproduct forces, which are electromagnetism and gravity, okay? The density of the nucleus of an atom is going to create a type of gravity, okay? And that will be literally the weak force, okay? And both of these together and that density of that nucleus, like say, or even on a, on, on a macro scale, when you get to the grand scale, like a sun, all of that density is going to create gravity, okay? Because all of that 
creates a byproduct force. Then that byproduct force creates another byproduct force. And you'll end up keep getting, uh, it keeps going. And that's where the Fibonacci sequence will keep going in, in, in perpetual generation. Okay? Now, the Ark of the Covenant, I'm not going to get into that right now. I'm just getting into the, the main stuff. I'm just going to keep it at, but this, this is a little part of it. All right? The Ark of the Covenant. An arc. What do you do when you touch two electrodes or a cathode and an anode? They arc. They spark. Okay? Onk. Onk. Okay? Now, it was basically a superconductor, but it was alpha and omega. Okay? It was the power of a star. Okay? It was cold fusion. They created lithium from helium-4 nuclei and ionized hydrogen, fusing those into lithium. All right? Now here, like I was saying, if you have your singularity, okay, how, where's all this area exist? Where, where's, where's, how's it existing? Unless you have this area here. See what I'm saying? This page is space. Imagine this page being space and, and the room and all this stuff, you know, everything else, you know, all of it, you know, all of that is the rest of space, okay? The singularity exists. Why? Because space exists first, okay? So now, you have space, the matter forms, then you have your singularity, it explodes, and then you have time, all right? All right. Now, we always live three-quarters of the way out, okay? We always live at three-fourths, all right? Like in our atmosphere. We live in the sun's atmosphere about three-quarters of the way out, all right? The galaxy. We live about three-quarters of the way out from the nucleus of the galaxy, okay? The Big Bang. Of the Big Bang... We live about three-fourths of the way out from its light or its atmosphere, okay? So, space itself, the fabric of space where light traverses in our universe that we know in our vicinity is light, okay? We can't see it, but it's there. It's an electromagnetic radiated medium, all right? It's proto-light. That's why we can't exceed the speed of light, because it's got such a, a head start. 13.7, 13.8 billion year head start. So we'll never actually catch up with that light. It's way, it's just way gone, you know. But it's not gone. We exist in that light right now. That's the ether, okay. That's the electromagnetic radiated medium that the light traverses, all right. Okay, that's the atmosphere of the Big Bang, all right. We are in... Like I said, it's still exploding now, but it's exploding in super slow-mo because it's so big. I mean, imagine on a grand scale of space. Boom! But that is thousands and thousands of miles per hour. But it's so, I mean, it's so big, it looks like slow motion. See what I'm saying? There's that reverse relativity. That's where reverse relativity starts coming in, too. All right, now here's two laws that exist in the universe, Okay. To potential for occurrence and micropotential. That's all that exists in the universe before the Big Bang. Potential for occurrence and micropotential. That's it. All right? Now, I have a lot of sayings on here like reverse relativity and such, and you'll hear things that I'm talking about that I've had to apply, okay? I've, made, I've had to make them up, you know? Or not necessarily make them up. It's the physics, but I have to come up with a term for it, okay? That makes sense, all right? And like I said, Potential for occurrence and micropotential are the only two laws that exist in the universe prior to the Big Bang. All right? Now, now, like I was saying about this, you know, you have your alpha emitting your beta. That's why men obviously carry alpha, the X and Y chromosomes, okay? Because your Y is your alpha. That's your science. That's the male side. Your X is your philosophy. That's the female side. That's your heart, okay? Notice it's like women use their feelings. They go with their heart. Guys usually use their brain. You know, man, science, woman, philosophy, yada, yada, yada. It, it, all, it, it all stems from all of this. That's where hermaphrodite comes into place, you know, when it comes to Greek mythology. A lot of this is based off Greek mythology, but it's not mythology. It's actually Greek physics, all right? An alpha particle emitting and beta particle is hermaphroditic. That's where that starts coming from. That's where the hermaphroditic universe, yada, yada, hermaphroditic gods, blah, 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 whatever. You know what I'm saying. Now, here's the only two scenarios, really, that I can figure would happen, all right, beforehand. And, and one of them has to do with the asymmetry of matter and antimatter. And the other one is just basically uh, how a human would reproduce. Now, the first scenario, you have all the protons, neutrons, and or all the protons and neutrons in the universe. Okay, now this is a quantum zygote or quantum embryo. It's like 
literally, it's birthing life, and this is exactly what it's going to do. It needs the X and Y factor, okay? Say this is the sperm, you know? That's the, the male. That's the Y. That's all the protons. That's the nuclear energy. That's the alpha, all right? And that is literally going to be implanted into this electric, or you're literally going to have a giant cell. It's a quantum cell of just pure energy, you know? Okay? All the protons, neutrons, electrons in the universe, and... Boom, you know, that's where the God particle comes from, or God molecule, or God cell, whatever you want to call it, all right? Now, there's either that scenario or the same scenario, except, except for, technically, this it's already all the regular matter we know, and antimatter, why, hits it. And that's why we got such a larger amount of matter than antimatter. Now, think about it. When we are born, we are of our mothers, Okay? The Father gives us the spark of life, and our mother carries us and brings that life into fruition. All right, That's exactly what happens here. The Big Bang is the spark of life, okay? And it's birthing, it, that's, it's bringing life into fruition, all right? Now, this would kind of uh, indicate or signify why the matter, there's more matter than antimatter in the universe, because technically we are more of our mom. Now, we, we, we get our our nuclear DNA, obviously, from our fathers, but we are mostly our mom because our mom carries us, and from her, we grow, okay? That would... That's the same situation here. We don't have much of our father anymore. We only have more mother in the universe. So that's why we have more matter than antimatter. Now, that's just the other scenario, okay? That's... I was just kind of putting those two together. These are technically... These are technically the only two scenarios, really. I mean, we already know there was a singularity, all right? But you got to go further than that. And there was a further than that, believe me. Okay? And like I was saying, God, generation, operation, destruction, or creation, order, and chaos. All right? Now, obviously, once we understand this, well, it'll lead us to metaphysics. All right? Because capacitors, arc lights, radioisotope thermoelectric generators with open arcs, you know, uh, capacitors, coils, resistors, all of this, literally using this wireless energy. Now, this, all of this, I, all of the, I figured out the pyramids, too. All right, I figured out the pyramids, the Ark of the Covenant, all that, literally by studying all this, okay? And it only took me actually believing that, uh, you know, nothing's impossible. <laughs> I mean, that's all. All I had to do was like literally think, hmm, now, there's some ironic coincidences in the Bible that they shouldn't have known. Well, how did they know that unless it has some knowledge? Hmm, maybe it's based off something other than that. Well, we know that it's got a lot of stories in it from Greek and stuff like that, and it's based off of other religions, all right? Well, they knew about science, and we had ancient technology. So, there has to be some of that that bled off into the Bible, you know, that they aren't coming out and just saying, you know? They're just giving us little subtle clues and hints and metaphors. And then when someone actually understands it, that means that we are further along and far enough along and progressed along enough technologically and enlightened enough to understand it, okay? And enlightenment means basically a well-thought-out and modern idea, okay? That's what enlightenment is, okay? I'm not trying to be cocky or nothing, but I'm a very enlightened person, all right? Or who else would do this crap, you know? I'm a very curious person, and I'm a very enlightened person. I don't say, oh, that's impossible. No, no, can't do it. No, no, no. I ain't like that, man. That, that right there, that's bad science. Okay, all these people say, yeah, man, I'm all about science. The Bible's retarded. <laughs> okay, if he's all about science, first of all, you would say, hmm, maybe I should look into that and see if there's any science in there. And if there is any science, find out what it is, why it is, break it down, and figure out how it is. You know, instead of, oh, no. <laughs> man, what kind of shit is that? Seriously, you're, you're part of the human race. You want to know the truth, but you're going to sit there and shut down anything that can lead you to the truth? I don't think so. Not me. Anyway. Now, 369 is a trinity of trinities, all right? Now, 369 technically exists in everything molecular uh, when it comes to the formation, when it comes to fusion. Technically, 369 has to do with fusion and creation, all right? Now, there is a trinity in every, or a trinity of trinities in every one of these religions I was talking about that I studied, all right? Every one of them has a trinity of trinities, okay? Every one of them all talk about the same stuff. But you know what a nomenclature is? That's the only difference, nomenclatures. A very simple thing. The word nomenclature, which is what is applied to a word to mean something. Okay? The word chosen to describe something. The word chosen for something. 
a nomenclature. That's what that is. So, because of nomenclatures, people are too blind to even understand something. Okay? And that was sarcasm, yes, because of a nomenclature. People are like, <laughs> and then fighting and arguing just because of something. They, they didn't understand how to put a word in there. You know? How, how hard is it to replace, you know, Vishnu with uh, time? Pretty simple. I mean, think about it. All of the, all the ones that represent time have a bunch of avatars in, in these religions, okay? This one had so many avatars, yada, 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 okay? Why did it have so many avatars? Hmm, avatars. Well, evolution. Time creates beings. Over time, you have all these beings. That's why time is always has a bunch of avatars, because of time. <laughs> I mean, it's not hard, literally. All right, so you got the 369, okay? You have your quarks and leptons, and they end up becoming, you know, you have your up quarks and down quarks making protons. You have your down quarks and up quarks making neutrons. And then you have your electrons, okay? And also, 369, lithium, carbon, and fluorine, all right? Fluorite, crystal. If you have a superconductor made for radium, gold, this is basically what the Ark of the Covenant was. This is, this is the unified field right here. This is actually a unified field. Believe it or not, this is how you would emulate a star. This is cold fusion, okay? It's actually cold fusion. And I, I guarantee it. I, I know this is work. This will work. I know this is real. I know it. Okay? I'm, I'm not trying to be a dick. I'm not trying to be a cocky ass. I'm, I'm trying to help people understand things that it's hard to understand. I just, I, I, don't, I don't know. Ever since that car wreck, I've been able to see things very abstractly and understand things that I didn't understand before. You know? I mean, I suffered frontal lobe damage. And it didn't damage me in a bad term, technically. It brought all of this to me. It's like... Well, I had an out-of-body experience. I ain't gonna lie. I literally saw him pull me out of a car. I mean, I, I mean, I freaking, I mean, I, I, they split my wig. I mean, I broke my neck, crushed my eye socket. I mean, I almost died, you know? And ever since after that wreck, man, I, this is all the stuff that I I can't get out of. I mean, I, this is all the stuff I see. I can, I can understand the physics behind everything. I can literally understand. Some people can, some people can't. I don't know. But it, it just brought that out of me because I think everybody has the potential. And I guess it brought the potential out because nothing's been the same ever since that day. All right. Now, you know how they say that neutron stars hold the key to, you know, how things formed and life and yada, 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 but they don't know how or why or blah, blah, blah. Okay. Well, here's why. All right. So you got a triple alpha process. Okay. Now, this is technically a reverse triple alpha process. All right. Now, you're going to have hydrogen, helium, and lithium. Okay. That are formed out in the universe, okay? Now, now this is just basic, simple, simple math, literally, just using the mass, all right, and, and the and atomic number, okay? Now, if you take hydrogen, helium, and lithium, and you add them up, you're going to get 11.95, okay? Carbon is 12.0, okay? You'll technically have a carbon isotope or allotrope here that is literally a, a sublime diamond star, it's the singularity, okay? Now, that carbon, ash, from the previous universe that literally reduced to ash, okay, because space is eternal. Imagine, this isn't the only Big Bang that's ever taken place. 13.8 billion years, psh, that's, that's nothing, you know? In, uh, Indian, uh, in the Indian religion, when it talks about Brahma, Vishnu, and uh, or it, might not, it might have even been Jainism, I can't remember. One of those two, it talks about the universe is more around the age of 155 trillion years old, okay? But they couldn't, they, they technically, there was still no beginning that they could even begin. There was no beginning that they could measure still. All they were doing, I technically, I think, is what measuring how long it would take for nuclear fluctuations to become prominent in the universe, okay? And that would be around 155 trillion years, okay? That's the oldest, but they even stated still that space is even older than that. So 13.8 billion years, guarantee there's been a universe that exploded into existence and reduced to ash to create another God particle. All right. Now, ash, diamond, carbon, all right? So like I was saying, it has the highest sublimation point, okay? So this carbon, all these quarks and leptons, this, and these electrons, I mean, uh, all, this, all this energy, and it basically comes from this microcosm of ash. Okay? Now, this star is literally like a giant neutron star, the singularity. All right? And that carbon 
is going to break down into hydrogen, helium, and lithium through a reverse triple alpha process because of all the pressures and density. Okay? Now, physicists say, oh, well, protocarbon or protocarbon or protoplasma protocarbon might have might have had a place, you know, but it would have taken a very, very long time, a lot longer than 13.7 billion years. All that did was verify to me that they know, but they're still suppressing it. All right? So, that means that I figured I was on the right track exactly because it led me right to that, all right? Now, these can break down because of all the pressures, and you will literally get a metal and two gases from this carbon. Now, look how special carbon is, okay? Look, guarantee carbon can manifest or replicate plasma from plasma, and plasma can replicate carbon, okay? Guarantee they're interchangeable. They will form each other from each other, all right? Because we are carbon-based. Carbon attaches very, very, very well to itself. It, there's no need to even be any other base life form by, besides carbon because the way it bonds to itself. Okay? Now, with that being said, we're also plasma. We're plasma beings. Plasma is anything alive. Okay? So plasma and carbon, very, very important. Alright, now this was just one of my things where I was breaking down on a universal scale. About with Genesis and all that, and like in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, what is God? Like I said, it's Alpha and Omega. So, in the beginning, quarks and leptons created the heavens and the earth. That that seems to make pretty good sense, you know. I mean, obviously, uh, you have a singularity here. It was created from quarks and leptons. God is generation, operation, and destruction, or creation, order, and chaos. So, that created this singularity. I mean, literally, there's no other way to explain it. It had to come from somewhere. And saying that there was no God, what are you going to call it? The quantum nature of the universe? That's what I call it. I call it God, too. Technically, this belief right here will unify people that believe in God and people that are atheists. Because, technically, an atheist can say, well, that's just the quantum nature of the universe. And a religious person can say, well, well that's God. Okay? So two people can literally believe the same thing that are from two different worlds. They can be on the same page. That's what I'm saying. This can create peace. That's why I call this chronotheism, because it's technically like a form of religion, all right, that I've been designing, all right, but it's based on science, all right? It, it's literally based on fact, just like Jainism. Jainism doesn't need gods. That's why it's excluded as a religion, but we see it as religion, because it talks about quantum physics and stuff, and about how things came into place and how they were formed. So we call that a religion instead of science. Why? Why do that? I mean, they knew the same stuff we know. They just use different words. Here's a brain buster for you. Look at this. Check this out. This, this is... Now, this is Jainism. This is what the Jainists say. Now, they say, oh, well, this is, oh, the liberated beings. Now, liberated. All right. Now, when you think about this on a scientific scale and take all these preconceived notions and throw them out the door, what do you got here? Looks like the Big Bang and the expansion of the universe, okay? And this is where the gods or the energies or the planets or galaxies, whatever, formed in all this. Technically, all of the stuff they're talking about here are described in our Big Bang Theory, just in different terms, different words, you know? That's it. But if you read them, you can see all of the parallels. So you have the singularity that, boom, pretty much the same thing. Big Bang, boom. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, if they're going to be looking in space, if they're, gonna, if they're literally going to be looking at the stars, they're obviously going to have to have lenses, okay? And they're going to see the same way we do. Flat, one way, two-dimensionally, okay? That's where the flat Earth theory and all of that stuff comes from. It's from people looking at the stars and seeing a flat disk in, in the sky, okay? I mean, when we look at the moon, it's flat. Okay, but we know it has depth. Okay, that's another thing when it comes to the curvature of space. Okay, physicists don't know what this curvature is. It's the depth of space. Okay, why does it look flat? That's the flat plane of existence. Okay, first you have to have a verse. Okay, that's space itself. Okay, the verse. All right. All right. Now, first you have to have a verse of space. We'll just call it. It's not a universe, it's not a biverse, it's not a triverse, it's not nothing like that. It's just one verse equals space. 
You just have space that exists. This just exists, okay? It just exists, all right? Now, you have macro, neutra, which is us, then you have your micro. Okay, there's more cosms than this, but this is it that I'm just going to start with. All right, this microcosm has its own fundamental relativity, just like this one does, okay? All right, but all of these cosms, okay, the cosm is the matter, the macro verse is the space, okay? So, this is, this is the matter, the physical plane, and the verse is the air that it shares. Okay? So all of these share the same verse of space, but they are all just on different fundamental levels. See what I'm saying? All right? Now here's a rough diagram of what I'm talking about. Okay. Say they all share this same verse of space. Okay? Now... Whenever you have your nano, I'm going to call it this nano subcosm, all right? Now, right here, say you have your quarks and leptons, the micro big bang, little flashes, zero point energy, point particles, okay? Those are like micro big bangs. That is energy. That energy does go somewhere, okay? It doesn't just flash, okay? E equals MC squared, people, all right? You have to have that energy doing something, and it all isn't going to end up, it's going to end up forming this god particle over Billions of years, trillions of years, however long it's going to take. But it takes a long time because you have that matter relative to the space, and that is going to take time, all right? If you do not have any matter, you do not have time. You have nothing to measure. You only have space. It's timeless space, all right? Now, say we got a micro subcosm, all right? This is a subcosm, all right? That's our micro world. That's an atom, okay? Our universe, this is our fundamental relativity, okay? The Big Bang or God particle gave birth, birth to this universe that we know, all right? This is our micro subcosm, all right? This is what we see when we zoom in, all right? Now, whenever you get to a smaller cosm, okay, this right here is going to be up here, okay? And then it's going to go smaller. See what I'm saying? And then this right here, this unisubcosm, is going to be right here. See what I'm saying? So, this is the small version of us on our neutral level, and our whole universe is a tiny level on this macroverse right here. See what I mean? And it's going to keep going and going and going. All right? It's just going to keep going and going. All right? So, literally, all of these, all of the, the verse of space, where the quarks and leptons, the alpha and omega, all of that exists as, uh, uh, say, a mother for all of these other universes, okay? There, there, there are multiple verses. Now, there are other ones that are on our fundamental relativity. Now, I'll show you this. All right, now, I'm just guessing when it comes to... I know there's more singularities in the universe, all right? Now, imagine our singularity. Our singularity is just another star. 